I love NADSAT. How are thou, thou globby bottle of cheap, stinking chip oil? Hello YouTube, what's up? I'm Adam, this is the boss and bookhead. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite languages in literature, NADSAT. NADSAT's a language found in Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange, which happens to be one of my favorite novels of all time. Clockwork Orange is a novel that follows a teenager named Alex, and it details his horrific crime sprees, his capture by the government, and his attempted rehabilitation via the Ludovico technique all promoted by the Minister of the Interior. The entire novel is narrated by Alex, and it is through the language of NADSAT, which is Russian for teen. Not only is it the most unique language I've ever seen in a book, it gives Alex's character a lot more dimension and charm. That reminds me a lot of the way Humbert Humbert speaks in Lolita. NADSAT is a combination of Russian, Romany, the English of Shakespeare, the English of the Elizabeth, Scythians, Malay, British Cockney, and general underworld criminal terminology. And it makes for some of the coolest and most rich sentences I have ever read in my life. Take this for example when he's describing listening to the old Ludwig van. Oh, it was gorgeousness and gorgeousity made flesh. The trombones crunched red gold under my bed, and behind my gulliver the trumpets three wise silver flamed, and there by the door the timps rolling through my guts and out again crunched like candy thunder. Oh, it was wonder of wonders, and then a bird of like rarest spun heaven metal or like silvery wine flowing in a spaceship, gravity all nonsense now, came the violin solo above all other strings, and those strings were like a cage of silk around my bed, then flute and oboe bored, like worms of like platinum, into the thick thick toffee gold and silver, I was in such bliss, my brothers. Jesus H Christ, that is so stinking good! And I have a lot of friends who read this book and are like, how do you understand this? The key with Nadsat is context. For example, when Burgess writes about Alex's intention of tolchocking some old Vec in an alley and vidi him swim in his blood, you can tell pretty easily what that means. Uh, and then you start to see some repeat words in there like tolchock, which is to hit, or vidi to see, and you kind of just go from there. So where did he get inspired for this beautiful language? Let me set the scene. In Russia in 1960s, the Cold War was going on. At this time, it was very rare for a British citizen to be able to go travel over there. But Burgess had the rare opportunity to go over there, uh, specifically to Leningrad in 1961, where he was reminded about the Manchester of his youth. The whole point of this trip for Burgess was cultural curiosity, and from this trip, both A Clockwork Orange and Honey for the Bear, which came out in 1963, were birthed. In preparation for the trip, Burgess spent a lot of time learning the language, just like he did with Malay during his colonial years in the 1950s. Burgess writes, One feels strongly, at least I do, that practitioners of literature should at least show an interest in the raw materials of their art. So what does NADSAT do for readers beyond just looking pretty? Well, in the book, it identifies Alex and his Druze as a group that embraces counterculture before their brutal behavior is even described. And just like George Orwell's 1984 language, New Speak, one of Burgess's main intentions with this language was to create a language that would last forever in its uniqueness. And I honestly think that's why this novel and movie has had such a long impact. It's not because they just talk funny, but it's gorgeous and you can keep rereading it and find new phrases that you can sink your teeth into every single time. Like it's just, it's so good to reread over and over and over again. It has so many perks of just taking it slow and going ward by ward. And this is partly what makes A Clockwork Orange, in my opinion, one of the greatest novels ever written. The language also coming from a lot of different cultural influences kind of removes the geographical location of the novel. This could take place anywhere. Leningrad, London, Los Angeles, any L place and not L place, up to you. Burgess saw his language NADSAT as a brainwashing device. He writes in You've Had Your Time that the novel was to be an exercise in linguistic programming with the exotisms gradually clarified by context. I would resist to the limit 
Any publishers demand that a glossary be provided. A glossary would disrupt the program and nullify the brainwashing. James Mitchie, the book's editor, had a lot of hesitations about the density of NADSAT when the book first came out. He stated that he told Burgess he wanted him to have it generally accelerate as the book progressed, noting that you can't throw too much at the reader too quickly or they'll just be turned off. And then this led to, in the book, Burgess kind of putting in parentheses some of the definitions for some of the words. Rooker is a hand. Let's so is a face and so on. And despite Burgess's insistence that there be no glossary printed, several versions have come out with one included either in the front or back of the book, so a larger audience could have access to the language. So like I said, this is one of my favorite books I have ever read. This is the book that really got me into literature in the first place. Um, it's just brutal, it's terrifying, it's beautiful, it's all of the above, and all of that is thanks to NADSAT, and I just love it so much. So what are some other books that you think have really unique language that just make the book and the world that much more interesting by incorporating it? I'd love to hear some of your answers and suggestions in the comments below. And that's all I have for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Adam. Hit subscribe and like and follow me on Instagram. Thank you guys so much. Let's get it boys.